So today we're going to learn how to uh, factor the five different types of factoring questions. The, um, the five types, we have GCF, which is greatest common, common factor, difference of two squares, simple and complex trinomials, and grouping. The way we do this is to first take a look at the question. You always look for GCF first, and then based on the number of terms, two terms you look for DOTS, if there's three terms, we look for the trinomials, and if there's four terms, you can try the grouping. So, right away, let's start with number one. We have three terms, so it's probably going to be either the simple or complex trinomial, and uh, we start with the GCF. I see three will go into all three of the terms, and I also look at the variable and can tell that there's an R that could be factored out of all three. So, out in front, I'm going to be factoring out a common factor of 3R. You have to divide it out of all three of the terms, and so you make sure you keep the same number of terms and the same signs. Dividing this out of here, you're going to have 1r squared. I don't need to write the 1. Factoring it of the 6r squared, 2r, and from the 72, I'm going to get negative 24 for my third term. So the reason that you know this is a simple trinomial is that the leading term has a coefficient of 1. When it's a simple trinomial, it doesn't always mean it's simple, it just means that you're going to have only one of the factors, one of the numbers to consider for factoring. So I need to look at, and we always go from the right to the left when we do this discussion, factors of 24 that are going to subtract to give a 2. Now you can run through all the factors in your head, 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and lastly 4 times 6, and that's the pair that we want, 4 and 6. So, we set up the problem with the pair of binomials. R is going to be the first term in both of them, and now we put the 4 and the 6. Don't put the signs yet. We want to use that same kind of um, process to find out the, the signs. So, moving from the right again, a negative here says that the signs are going to be different. And this tells me the sign on the bigger of the two numbers. In this case, it's a plus. So the 6 is going to get a plus, and the 4 is going to get the minus. Now you can multiply this out again to be sure that you have the right factoring for this. Now we're going to move on to the next question. We have two terms, and just like before, we're going to be looking for the GCF. I have a 5 that goes into both of the terms. You might look and say, oh, there's a squared and there's a 4. Can you divide out something there? And no, you can't because those are exponents. There are two terms, so we're expecting this is going to turn into a difference of two squares, if possible. So, as I said before, the 5 comes out of both terms. You divide it out of both of them. You're going to be left with m squared minus 5 into 180 is 36, a to the 4. You don't change the variable parts at all. I have two terms, and so the question is, is this a difference of two squares? We have two terms, it's a difference, you can square root m to the 2, you can square root a to the 4, so it is a difference of two squares. Don't forget to copy the 5 down, and you set up your pair of brackets, m is going to break down as m and m, 36 breaks up as 6a and 6a, and we put a plus and a minus on each of those brackets. There's no question, it doesn't matter if you put the minus first or not. Where's my mistake? Oh yeah, that's right, it was a to the 4, so this is going to be a squared in this bracket and a squared there. So watch out for that. If that had been a 6, you would have divided this, the 6 by 2 and you would have got a to the 3 and a to the 3 in both of those. Number 3 has 4 terms. Now right away you look and you see that there are four terms. And so you're going to expect this to be grouping. Grouping means that you're going to pair them up and take common factors out of each of them. Now I'm going to make a, an intentional mistake here about the GCF, pretending that I ignore it, and uh, I'm going to take out just the GCFs out of each of these pairs. Notice I don't put the brackets right away, specifically because of that minus sign, and it's always going to cause problems if the third term is minus. I can take out a 6p out of this first pair, leaving me with 2 minus 3n. No, 1n. 
And then the second pair, you can take out a common factor of 10. And I take out the 10, and I'm going to get 2 plus 1n. Now I made a mistake right now, and the problem is these two brackets don't match. And it's a common mistake to make that you take out a negative factor in front as your GCF, you have to remember that you're dividing it out of both of those terms. So the middle term, or the, the sign in between the two, is not supposed to be a minus uh, plus, it's supposed to be a minus because you factor the 10 out of both of those terms. Now you have a common bracket in both of them, which is exactly what we want. And now it's similar to GCF again, that we can take out a common factor, but in this case it's a binomial factor that we're bringing out into the front. So 2 minus n is going to be factored out of both of those terms, and the leftover pieces are going to go into their own bracket at the end, the 6p minus the 10. You recall that I said at the beginning, I intentionally disregarded looking for the GCF at the beginning. I, I should do this all the time, especially when there's four terms, because the next part that I'm going to do here is going to be a little bit tricky. And yeah, you may have noticed I forgot the P. When you factor the GCF in a case like this, you can take a GCF out of that second bracket. And so that means that I'm going to take out a 2. And I'm not going to stick the 2 here because it looks messy having the monomial in the middle. And so I'm going to take the 2 right out into the very front. And don't think that there's any sort of possession here that it belongs to this bracket. It just so happens that it looks better when it's out in the front. You like to have the monomial factors at the beginning. So I factored it out of both of those terms. So you're left with those um, completed factoring. So that was grouping in pairs. The last example we're looking at here is a trinomial, and looking at it, we don't have a GCF for all three. So it's a little bit of a shame because now it means that it's not going to be a simple trinomial, it's a complex trinomial. The leading coefficient is not one. The reason this becomes a complex trinomial is that I now have to regard the factors of six and the factors of 35 when I'm trying to determine the factoring for this. Now, there is another method called decomposition. I'm not going to be showing that right now. The one that I'm going for is called the cross-check method. It works uh, better in terms of getting to the answer faster, and after a while you can do it in your head. What I need to do is look at the factors of 6 and the factors of 35. So I'm going to put the factors of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3, 3 and 2, 6 and 1. And I'm going to put the factors of 35. 1 and 35, 5 and 7. Now I'm going to stop here. I don't have to put them backwards on both of the sides. I put the factors of 6 backwards. I don't have to put the factors of 35 backwards. And I make a cross in the middle that's going to use, that I'm going to use to try and determine the signs and the numbers for the brackets. So here's the way it works. You're looking for factors that are going to subtract to give 11 and you're going to take the pair of multiplications that you see here to figure out which pairs are going to work. Well, 6 times 35 is a big number. I think it's 210 and 1. 210 minus 1 is not going to give me 11. Then I can try 6 times 7 and 5. Well, that's 42 and 5. They don't subtract to give 11, so I don't need to use that anymore. I'm looking at the factors of 3, 2, 1, 35. That's going to be 105 and 2. They're not going to subtract to give 11. And 3 times 7 and 2 times 5 is 21 and 10. They're the pairs that are going to work. 21 times 10, uh, 21 minus 10 is going to give me the 11 I need in the middle. So right away before I lose it, I'm going to circle those, put an oval around them, and these are going to be my two brackets. The first bracket is going to have a 3 and a 5 in it. And the second bracket is going to have a 2 and a 7 in it. Now I need to dress it up. I'm missing a couple of the details. For example, I needed the x on both of those first terms. 3x times 2x, 6x squared. 5 times 7, 35. Now, you probably noticed, wait a second, that's minus 35. 
Yeah, so that means I've got to figure out which one of these guys is going to get the plus and which one of them is going to get the minus. Well, this, the last part about this is to compare the inside product and the outside product. These are the two pairs of factors, um, multiplications, that we're going to use to combine to get that negative 11. Well, to get a negative 11, the 21 has to be negative, the 10 would have to be positive. The second one of these has the negative, so it goes in the second bracket. The first one puts the sign on that first bracket. And so it is correctly factored at this point. You double check positive 10x minus 21x, which gives you that negative 11x. So hopefully those uh, examples will help you to see all of the different types, GCF, dots, simple and complex trinomials, and grouping. Thank you.